my channel. I'm Rachel, the owner and creator here at The Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Today's Tuesday. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Uh, and for today's video, I have a thrift clip for you. As I'd mentioned in my last video, I still had a few projects sitting around in my kitchen that were all kind of fall related and I wanted to get them done and out on the floor. So that's really what I worked on this past week and I did manage to get all of them done. And so I'm really happy to have a little bit more breathing room in my kitchen and uh, to make sure that I've got all my fall stuff finished for the season. So I hope you like them and I hope you enjoy the video. And without further ado, let's get to those projects. My first project is a very simple fix of these little pumpkin plates I picked up not too long ago at the thrift store. All of the gold on these on the stems was a little bit faded and kind of chippy. So I grabbed one of my favorite liquid patinas by DIY. This is pennies from heaven. I gave each of the stems two good even coats and then these guys were finished. Project two is this little ceramic owl that I snatched out of my garage. This thing's probably been in there for a couple of years and I figured it was finally time to get it done and out on the floor. So I started by giving it a coat of a Rust-Oleum 2X paint in, I believe it's called Espresso, before moving on to painting it with the DIY paint. And for this, I am using DIY's Skeleton Key, which is this absolutely gorgeous little bit of a gray blue, uh, just a really, really pretty color. Now I did go over it with two good even coats and I used my paintbrush to stipple the paint on for both coats just to avoid any brush marks. Once that was done and the paint was completely dry, I decided to go ahead and distress this bird. And for that, I'm using a damp shop towel and just going over all of the raised parts and the detail to bring out a little bit of that brown paint from underneath. You don't have to do this step if you're not into distressing, but I really think it adds a lot of character to this little owl. Then it's on to sealing my paint. For that, I am using first DIYs clear wax just going over the entire thing with a, a good even coat of the wax doing it in sections and then wiping back any excess with a shop towel once that's done and I've coated the whole thing with the clear wax I did move on to DIYs dark wax now the reason you want to put a coat of clear wax or big top or some other kind of sealer before you put on the dark wax is so that you don't end up making your piece look muddy. This wax is pretty thick and it's highly pigmented and if you go directly over the paint it is really going to soak in and you run the risk of having very very dark muddy looking paint. So it's better like I said just to go over it with either clear wax or DIY's big top and in this case of course I use the clear wax and then I'm just taking a small brush brushing the dark wax into all the nooks and crannies and then wiping back any excess with a shop towel this really does a good job of highlighting all of the shadowy areas in this piece and making all of that beautiful detail really stand out once I was finished with the dark wax this little owl is done and I love how he came out Thank you. 
This next project is one of my very few roadside finds. I found this on my way home in the middle of nowhere on the side of a road and I grabbed this along with a couple of other things out of their free pile and I as soon as I saw it I was like what a perfect uh, little project for fall. I figured it just needed a good paint job on that frame so I masked off the frame and gave it two good even coats of DIY's Gypsy Green. I thought that would be a perfect color to match the green that was in the leaves on this picture. Next, I decided to go ahead and distress some of the areas on this piece just to highlight a little bit of the detail around the picture and then on the edges and bring back a little bit of that uh, light colored wood. It kind of matches the colors in the leaves a little bit, so I wanted some of it to show through. Once that was done and it was completely dry again, it's on to sealing my paint. Now, anytime you use DIY paint, you want to seal it either with a wax or some sort of a top coat. For this, I wanted to go over it with dark wax in a couple places. So I choose, chose to use uh, the clear wax as a first coat, wiping it back with a shop towel as I went. Once that was done, it was on to dark wax, and for this I'm using DIY's dark wax, and I grabbed a little detail paintbrush and just went over into the grooves with some of that dark wax, and then just right next to the grooves just to add a little bit of a shadowing, and again, highlight some of the details in this frame. It didn't have a lot of architectural interest, and I thought this would be a great way to bring out some of the detail that it did have. And just a reminder, the DIY products that I'm using in today's video can be purchased through my website and that's www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com. Once I had gone around the entire piece with the dark wax, it was time to remove the tape go around the edge. I usually use a screwdriver to just make sure there's no paint residue stuck to the glass in the, in the edges and then clean it up with a little bit of Windex and this piece is all done. Project four is another frame that I've had for a while. I'm pretty sure I bought this thing for a dollar at an estate sale. Uh, this is an original canvas. It is stretched in the back on the frame. So there wasn't a way to remove the canvas from the frame. So I just left it in there and taped it off. Now I started by painting this gypsy green like I did the last one, decided I really didn't like it all that much. And so I started over again using layered chocolate by DIY. Much, much better. Then it was on to distressing using my damp shop towel and I really wanted some of this white that was underneath to show through. Luckily, it didn't bring a lot of the green up. It just showed a lot of the white, which I thought would go really, really well with the flowers in the frame. Once it was completely dry, I removed the masking tape and then it was time to paint the inside portion of this frame. I was able to slip four pieces of regular paper underneath the canvas and the frame uh, to help keep it clean. And then I went over this inside part of the frame with one good even coat of DIY's crinoline. This was a perfect match to the color that was on the frame originally and it looked really really good with uh, the distressing that I'd done. Not to mention it's a good match for some of the flowers in the picture as well. Then it was on to sealing my paint. For this I'm using DIY's clear wax. Going around the clear or the uh, crinoline portion first and then doing the layered chocolate just to make sure not to pull any of that layered chocolate back into the crinoline that would be a mess. Once I've got the uh, wax down I just wipe back any excess with a, a shop towel and then this piece is pretty much done. It's just a matter of removing that paper 
and voila, what a beautiful transformation. My fifth and final project are these two pumpkins and I saw this technique done a couple times by a couple different artists that I wanted to try with these. So I'm going to be using IOD's air dry clay with some molds. The first mold I'm using is called He Loves Me, it's by IOD, uh, and I'm going to be picking out these leaves that are in this mold. So I just cut off a chunk or broke off a chunk of the IOD air dry clay, put that in the mold, pressed it down really well with my fingers, and then I always just kind of push it in, in one direction, kind of away from me, until I'm confident that the mold is completely full with the clay. Then I smooth it out really well and then flip it over and let gravity kind of take its toll. I did this I think five or six times with this same leaf, just filling it with the air dry clay, making sure that it was completely full, smoothing it out really well, and then taking each leaf off and placing it on the pumpkin where I thought I'd want it. Once that was done, I moved on to the next mold for this pumpkin, and this one is called Delicate Flora, and it's by Redesign by Prima. And I'm just using the same technique and the air dry clay. This one took a little bit more, um, I don't know, convincing, I guess, of the air dry clay to go into all of the little nooks and crannies. It is a very, very detailed uh, mold, and it's also very delicate. And so I was very careful when I flipped this over to just kind of roll the mold out and help it out a little bit with my fingers. And then I very carefully placed it on my pumpkin, just trying to kind of figure out what exactly I wanted to do with these before I went ahead and glued them all down. Once I had a couple of these guys placed on my pumpkin and was pretty happy with my placement, I began removing the pieces very, very carefully so that I could begin gluing them down. So I started with the leaves and each one just got a really thin coat of this is tight bonds quick and thick and I'm placing that on with my finger I found that to be just the easiest way to do this and making sure again that it's got a thin even coat all the way out to the edges then I carefully lay each leaf down and tap 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 around the edges and press lightly down on the center making sure that every bit of it is laid down and adhered to the pumpkin. Now with the glue, you just want to make sure again that you've got a thin coat. The last thing you want is glue oozing out from under your piece as you put it down. So once I have the leaves all in place and I'm happy with how they look, I go back to the little uh, floral mo molds and start placing them kind of on top of the leaves, just in the center and again, pressing them very carefully down with my fingers, making sure to touch every last little bit of the molds so that they have really, really good adhesion to the pumpkin. I then just continued working my way around the pumpkin, carefully placing the uh, floral molds in between each of the leaves around the entire thing. Once that was done, I moved on to the smaller pumpkin, and for this one, I'm using the molds called Botanist Floral and Delicate Flora, both by Redesign by Prima. So I started with the uh, Botanist Floral and using the leaves, and I just used the same air dry clay, same technique, put a little flower in there, filled the mold with the air dry clay, smoothed it out really well, and then placed my leaves where I thought I wanted them. Then it was on to the Delicate Flora portion and again just filling those molds with the air dry clay smoothing them out and placing them on my pumpkin once I was happy with how both of them looked I let them dry completely overnight 
and then it was on to painting. So for this, I am using the big one is going to be Summer Crush. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous orange by DIY. Absolutely love this color for fall. And I am very carefully painting the molds, uh, trying to get down in between all of the little nooks and crannies. And then I did go back and paint the bottom of the pumpkin. I just didn't get any video of that. And then for the little one, I'm going in with DIYs Gypsy Green. And again, just very carefully painting those molds, making sure to kind of push the paint down into all the nooks and crannies of those molds. Once that was done and the paint was dry, I decided to go ahead and paint the stem of the larger pumpkin, uh, mainly because I'd gotten orange all over the base of it and I really couldn't clean it off. So this seemed like a good solution. And when I was done, I thought, eh, I'll just go ahead and paint the, the stem of the little one too. Then it was time to seal my paint. For this, I am starting off with a coat of DIY's clear wax, working that into all the molds and all the nooks and crannies of this pumpkin and making sure it has one good even coat of the wax, then very carefully wiping back any excess with my shop towel. Once that's done, it's time for the dark wax. Now I took a smaller brush and really kind of loaded it up and tried to get the dark wax, especially down into all the grooves and the nooks and crannies of these molds, just to make it look nice and grungy and really, really highlight all the details in these molds. For the main body of the pumpkin, I did thin the wax out just a little bit with some mineral spirits just to make it easier to go over the body of it. And then I wiped back any excess with my shop towel. I just worked my way around this entire pumpkin, making sure to go over the bottom and all the sides with that dark wax. Once that was done, I went over the grooves again with a little bit more dark wax just to highlight them. And then the big guy was ready for the next step. And then it was on to finishing up the little pumpkin. Same process, starting off with that clear wax, giving it a one good even coat all over, and then going back over it with that dark wax, being especially careful to get that dark wax down into all the nooks and crannies of those molds, and then wiping back any excess with my shop towel. This one I had a little bit of fun doing some shading and all those cute little grooves that it had by using some more dark wax and then very carefully wiping back the excess with a shop towel and then it's finally time for my favorite part of this whole process and that is the gilding wax this is DIY's golden rule gilding wax and all I did was take my finger and lightly wipe the wax onto my the tip of my finger and then little by little worked it over all of the details in these molds just a little bit at a time wiping that wax onto the piece and since this is a finishing wax there's no need to go over it it's a done deal and then it's on to the little pumpkin look how beautifully that gold wax brings out all of the detail in those molds projects for today. I hope you liked them and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here and you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. And also please remember to comment below and let me know which of the projects your favorite was. For me, definitely the pumpkins. I think that's probably one of my favorite fall projects that I've done all season. For Friday, I am really not positive at this point what exactly I'm doing for Friday's video. Uh, I've got so many things in my kitchen just sitting around everywhere. It's honestly just a little overwhelming, but I promise you I will find a few things to updo, recycle, upcycle for Friday's video. So I hope you'll join me for that. In the meantime, have a wonderful week and thank you so much for being here. Bye. Can I see the girl? Cute, cute, cute.